I'm very interested in looking at how ices and dust um, have been brought together during the formation of the solar system. In this chamber, we simulate the conditions that we find on comets, very cold and a vacuum. One would normally have uh, uh, something like a, uh, a spectrometer which looks at the individual wavelengths of light and is then able through that to identify uh, a specific spectral lines. This instrument works very much in the same way. Um, it's just looking at a very new wavelength range uh, which is now only accessible due to new technologies. When ice reaches a certain temperature, it becomes crystalline and forms the crystals that we know about from, from snow and so on. But at very low temperatures, ice can be amorphous, not have this crystalline structure. And this technique at terahertz wavelengths is capable of, of distinguishing between amorphous and crystalline ice. By studying the surface of a comet, and at least the, the few centimetres below the, the, the real surface, then we've got a chance at least of being able to, to place some constraints on the solar system formation process. We're sort of imagining that we are able to put um, a transmitter and a receiver down a borehole and then using some form of cables, bringing them up to the spectrometer that's sitting on the lander. We basically shine this terahertz light either through a sample, so we have the transmission mode, or we rotate the antennas and then we can do um, reflection mode spectroscopy. We scan across the surface to get uh, an image pixel by pixel of, of, the, of, the, of the surface of the comet. So we put in ice and uh, we can mix it with dust, so we can, we can have different compositions, we can have like layers, we can have large ice clumps and a bit of dust. And we do have antennas that we can put inside the vacuum chamber to actually scan the, the sample. When we design a flight instrument, we also have to make sure that it's going to withstand the environment that it sees. And that's not merely the environment that it sees at, for example, the cometary surface. It's also the environment that it sees getting to that cometary surface. And that means being launched, going into vacuum, um, experiencing the shock when the, when the spacecraft separates from the, from the rocket, experiencing radiation, so highly energetic particles that can damage the, the instrument and damage the electronics. All of those things need to be tested. So we put the devices on a shaker table, we put them inside a thermal vacuum chamber to simulate vacuum, uh, but also to simulate the temperature range that the instrument can experience, and that can be extreme. Since we are doing prototyping, we wouldn't be ready anyways to, to deliver now. So what we do is we're, we're in close contact with, with uh, ESA and when there's going to be a next opening for a, a mission to a comet, we will definitely apply 